I've got an area on the side of my house that is just ugly with an old hose. So what I'm going to do is take some handles and also the base for a planter and I'm going to put these handles on the side. But it can be difficult to find out how to do it. So all you got to do is take the handles and put some tape over them. Take a pin and you're just going to poke through where the screws go in the handles. Then you'll just peel the tape off and you can then transport the tape onto the side of the planter where you want to drill your marks. Once you got it on there firmly, just go ahead and take a pin or a black marker and just push it through and mark. This is where you're going to drill the holes. Once you remove the tape, it's going to show you where your two marks are. Now, on the screws that go for the handles, you want to make sure you get the right size drill bit, just enough that the threads will go through the planter. Drill your holes, and then you can pop the screws through from the inside to the out. And that way you can go ahead and put these handles on. Use your hand to tighten them first, and then a screwdriver later. Go ahead and put both sides on, and make sure you get them nice and tight. We're going to be using these handles to carry this base around. Then what we're going to do is go ahead, put both sides on, but we're going to flip it over because we need to drill some drain holes. I went ahead and just used these marks that are on the back and put them all the way through. And also I want to make sure I get the middle one. That way it can drain if it needs to. Once we got these holes drilled, turn it back over and we're going to use some succulent potting soil. Put that all over and spread it out, fill it up, and then you can begin to go ahead and transplant your succulents over to this base. All you have to do is make a hole and put the roots in. It's great. Succulents are so good at being transported over from one pot to another, and they're easy to take care of. I love having them because they don't take as much water. Sometimes I call them forget-me-nots because you can forget them for a while and they hold up great. Go ahead and put in as many or as few as you want. On the planter though, where we're going to hide the hose, we need to drill a hole about halfway up and that's how we're going to put the hose in. Go ahead and make sure about a one inch hole will be just fine. Also sometimes them garden hose leak, so we also want to put some drain holes in the bottom of this planter. Now the last thing we got to do is put some wood in there. That's going to hold this lid up. I went ahead and used my drill to do a pre-drill, put some screws in there, and then you put the wood back up against the side and you'll use your drill to go ahead and cinch those screws down. If you do it nice and tight, it's going to hold it really nice. Once you got it, make sure you do two on each side. Make sure you also get that garden hose through. Pull it all the way through, wrap it up, and look at that. Go ahead and put your succulent tray right on top. I hope this inspired you to build your own DIY succulent tray garden hose holder. I'm going to start with three cutting boards that are average size and width that I picked up at my local dollar store. The first thing I want to do for my project is paint my boards. I love the green on these boards but they're a little too yellowy for what I want them for so I'm just going to give them a coat of milk paint. You want to make sure that you do inside the handle if you have a handle and you want to make sure that you do both sides. I'm not going to worry about it being too opaque because I don't mind if I see some of the wood grain through the paint. I can even take a cloth and wipe a little bit of that back if I want it to be a little bit more of a whitewashed effect. 
Now that the paint is dry on all three of my cutting boards, I'm going to take my sandpaper and I just want to rough up the edge a little bit. I love the look of aged things, so I want to give this just a little bit of that aged feel. To finish off my board before I assemble this, I'm going to use some hemp oil. And hemp oil is food grade safe, but it also makes a wonderful coating for your milk paint or chalk paint. I'm just gonna put some on a rag and I'm just gonna rub this all over. Even though I won't be eating off of these cutting boards, I do want to protect the paint that I've put on them. And I will just go ahead and rub this on all sides of each of the boards. With all three of the boards sanded and oiled, it's ready to assemble my boards together. Now they're going to feel a little oily at first, but that oil will dry up nicely in the next couple of days. So to assemble the boards, I want to work with the back of each of the boards. So I'm going to turn them over here. And I want to make sure that they are all nice and level so that the bottoms are all in the right spot together. And what I'm going to do is take some of these reclaimed hinges that I have. And if you don't have any that you've used before, you can always pick these up at the um, hardware store. And they're just little uh, piano hinges here. And you want to make sure that this little raised part is on the inside. You don't want to put it in between your boards because it's going to create too much of a gap. And I will um, measure these out in just a second. So I'm going to make sure now I have some lines on my board. So I can use those as a way to um, line up my boards here. And I'm just going to put these about an inch or so from the top of my line there and an inch or so from the bottom of my line here. Once I have my hinges in place, it's time to add some screws to hold them permanently where they are. So I'm just going to put these in. So I'm going to start by attaching just the four at the bottom and then making sure that I have this exactly level down below before I attach all the rest of the screws. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that that is level. And that is perfect. So I'm going to attach the rest of my screws and you can see that I've split my wood here a little bit and that's okay. Um, once you see the outside, you really don't notice that. And also, I don't mind that. I actually love the more beat up and worn things look. Now that my boards are together, I can slip them into place and cover up this cluttered corner of my kitchen counter. They slide into place so easily they can be moved easily and now I can conceal all of that stuff in this corner. It was such a, a fun and easy project to do and a great way to use some of these dollar store cutting boards. I hope the next time you're there you'll grab some of these cutting boards and make your own clutter cover to help keep your kitchen organized. I want to thank KLC on Home Talk for inspiring this project and I will see you next time. I'm Lisa from Recreated Designs. Thanks for watching Home Talk.